Lightroom Wizards! Welcome back to Lightroom Wizards. Um, today we are going to look at the idea of dodging and burning. Um, now dodging and burning is practice that darkroom photographers have been using throughout the history of photographer and it basically just boils down to uh, darkening areas of a photo that you want to darken and lightening areas of a photo that you want to lighten. And it's, yeah, it's a technique that's been used in dark rooms in the film era for years, and it can be used for a variety of reasons. I mean, basically, you want to be able to just bring attention to where you want to bring it. And so sometimes that means darkening to get rid of distractions, or just darkening shadows to make them pop more, or bringing out your highlights um, to just, yeah, again, make them stand out more against the dark. So what we're going to do is, now there's different ways to dodge and burn, and as with anything in Photoshop or Lightroom, there's usually a hundred different ways to do it. Um, I'm just going to walk you through the process that I usually like using, um, which generally, generally comes down to using a brush. Um, and in that brush in Lightroom, we're going to look at a few different things, including contrast, exposure, uh, highlights, uh, blacks, just to kind of get a feel for an image that we want. So the image that I have here today that we're just going to use Dodge and Burning on is uh, a fitness image that I took in my very small basement studio um, of Tanya. Now, Tanya is very fit. She, We've got some kind of great muscle tone going here, um, some nice shadows and highlights to begin with. But as you can see, we got all kinds of distractions here. I mean, this is never an image that I'd be happy with on its own. Um, yes, I wish I had shot this better in camera and used a seamless background and all that stuff. But I mean, if I got it perfect in camera, we wouldn't have a tutorial here today on what to show you how to dodge and burn. So we're going to just stick with that. Um, so this image right here, uh, yeah, all kinds of distractions. Uh, I basically want to, I think, end up with an end result image here where I have her in this f crouching pose basically s totally against a solid background. And so right here we have all this stuff that is just too bright. It's distracting. I got some light stands. I got her sneakers in the shot, a cord. So let's see what we can do with this. Now, first of all, I'm going to switch this image into black and white just because... I love black and white for a lot of purposes. You don't have to. You can do dodging and burning with color as well. And we'll pro probably take a quick look and example of that next. So I'm just going to quickly convert this to black and white. Now, so I'm right here. Now, to get into kind of the area where I would do the bulk of my dodging and burning is right here, using your brush tool. So I'm going to click on this brush. Now, when you have brushes, you can adjust all kinds of different things. You can adjust exposure, contrast, highlight, shadow, clarity, sharpness. We're going to do a mix of stuff here today for this tutorial. Um, but I'm going to probably start with just exposure. So, in your drop downs here, you can kind of hop to any specific thing. And it basically just sets everything else to zero and lets you focus just on that one area. But it doesn't really matter. I can go to exposure and set this one to zero and then work on clarity. It doesn't really matter. But I'm just gonna, yeah, let's start with exposure. And so I know I wanna darken all of this area. I wanna get rid of it. I wanna make it not so distracting. I wanna hide it. Um, so I'm just gonna set this, let's say, to minus one. Now the beauty of using brushes is if I click and do something and I start painting and I bring down that exposure and I say, you know what, that's not enough. Well, I can always, after the fact, brighten it, darken it, I can change it to whatever I want. So I can see right now that minus one is not going to be enough. So I'm going to just bring that down even darker. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to darken this area out, but I'm not going to get too close to her yet. I'm going to work on the finer details around her later on. Let's just come with some pick and a pretty wide brush here. You can change your brush size right here. You can go up or down, or you can also use your left and right bracket key. That's kind of a shortcut. I don't like having to hop over here all the time to move my size. So if I'm here and I'm painting and I need to go bigger, I just use my right bracket key, press it a few times, and it makes my brush bigger. So I'm going to keep painting. Now you notice there's two circles within that brush. Um, it's kind of a wide circle and then a smaller circle. Basically that's my feather. Now feather is important because it kind of says 
it'll give you a kind of a transitional or a gradient area where the effect isn't quite so strong. Now let me deliberately do something bad here. So that if I turn my feather off and all of a sudden, oops, I touched size there. If I turn my feather off and I go over her skin, you notice where I see a very dark defined circle there. And let me just make that more emphasized. You can see a totally dark circle right there. Um, so feather doesn't give you any transition area. So I want I want a transition. Usually it means for smoother looking edits um, where you don't get quite as much of a halo effect if you're not perfect. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to bring down my size a bit and I'm just, yeah, going to start painting this in and let's bring down the exposure more. So right now, oh, now I still got that area here that I went over just to show you. So I'm going to just kind of go back in my history here. I'm going to do Command Z, go back and get rid of that one spot. Okay, there we go. I'll just go back a couple more to be safe. All right, let's start here again. Okay, so I'm right there. My feathers turn on, my sizes turn on, my exposure, and let's just start painting. Make that brush bigger and smaller as I need it. I'm just gonna go over and make this dark, try to get rid of all those distractions. Dark, 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 dark. Still, I'm gonna just do the fine work around her later. Just want to get rid and make everything else look basically pure black here. Okay, so now obviously I can still see lots of stuff here, so let's even bring that down lower. And lower. I don't think I painted over any for skin, so it shouldn't impact that at all. And just to make sure. No, I'm not touching your skin at all. Now I'm just dealing with exposure here. If I want to deal with just the dark areas of a picture, I can also touch this. Shadows will just make your dark areas darker or your light areas lighter. And we'll get into that in a second. Same with highlights. But right now, now one limitation of Lightroom is you can only go to minus four. And you can see right here that we can still see a little bit into the details. I can still see her sneaker. So even if I wanted to go to minus five or minus six, I can't. What you gotta do is if you reach kind of a limit that it won't go darker, is basically you click off the brush and click on and that creates a new brush and that allows me to do it again and I can go to kind of whatever I want. So right here I'm going to go to minus 2.3 there. I'm going to go darker and kind of just paint over on a second brush which allows me to go even darker than I had in my first. Let's go around there, make sure that I'm not missing anything and even go darker yet. Okay, now I can still see a little bit of her sneaker, so I'm just going to quickly clean that up using the spot cleaning, spot healing uh, tool. Now I could do another brush and paint it over darker yet, but let's just do this. I'll quickly get rid of it. Hides that. Perfect. Okay, so now I want to get in and go closer to the finer details, so I'm just going to zoom in. I'll zoom in a even a little bit farther. And now this is where I got to be a little more particular, a little more careful. And I'm just going to go out just a bit. Okay, right about there. Okay, so now I'm going to create a new brush. And I'm going to turn up my feather on this one. I want to just, because I know I'm going to be painting over the edge a bit, I don't want it to impact her legs and her arms too much if I do go over those edges just a bit. And let's just see. I'm going to make that brush a little bit smaller. And let's just do some of the finer detail work now. I'm going to go in, try to hide that kind of transition between the wall and the ceiling uh, and the floor. Go right here, kind of go in. Now that little beam of light on her foot is actually a bit distracting, so I'm actually going to just hide that. I don't care about that. Now go in, right around the edges. Let me just kind of drag this around, see what else I got to do. So we're getting there. It's still not perfect, but we're definitely getting closer. Let's see where this is allowing me to just darken everything that I don't want in the shop because it's distracting. I could still see through that one a bit. So let me just make it a bit darker. A bit darker yet. I'm going to do a second brush just to make sure that I can get that as dark as I need to. There we go. That's better. Now my feathers allow me to just be a little bit sloppy there and paint over her leg and still not have it look too fake. And it helps me get rid of that halo. 
Again, halos are almost always a sign of what I would consider kind of a rookie-looking um, editing job. You generally want to avoid them. They don't look natural. Let me just kind of get that area right there between her knees. And that's what it means. So right there, you can still see a bit of a halo. Our goal is to kind of hide that. Just bring that down a bit more in exposure. There we go. Okay, so I've generally, let me just zoom out here. Whoops, go the other way. Um, we've generally darkened the bulk of what needs to be uh, darkened here. I may have missed some tiny little spots, but for the most part, it is not too, too bad. Um, let's just go over one more time just to make sure that I've got everything. I'm going to just totally bring everything down here. Highlight, shadows, exposure. Now you notice the cool thing about using brushes too is I see these three little dots here. I mean this basically is all the brushes I've created already and when I hover over one it shows me what area it has impacted. So if later on I decide, you know what, I don't like this brush or I accidentally went over a part that I didn't mean to, I can kind of click on it and delete it if I wanted to. I'm not going to right here, but that's one of the beauties of Lightroom is it always gives you that option after the fact. Okay, so let's get back in here now. Okay, so I'm just going to do one last kind of full big brush. I'm not going to go too close to her skin, and I'm just going to make sure that I'm not leaving any other area undarkened. If that makes sense. I don't think that makes sense. What does undarkened mean? Um, sorry. Long day. Okay, here we go. Okay, so now I've basically got that darkened out, which is cool. But now I still say that she doesn't pop ag enough against that um, dark background. And this is where you can go the other way. You can do what's called dodging rather than burning. Dodging is kind of bringing out light areas or making areas lighter in your, in your photo. So I'm going to go back into my brush here, and I'm just going to zoom in. And or let's just take a look at what I think needs to be dodged. So right here, I kind of like how uh, light her arm is there. So I don't want to impact there too much. But right here, this is a little bit dull. Um, I didn't light her as evenly as I liked. Um, I have a nice highlight here in her wrist, but I think in this area here, I definitely want to go a bit lighter. And let's see what else. Drag this over, maybe a little bit towards her wrist. And I might want to lighten her legs just a bit so it doesn't look like she's just arms and shoulders with the rest of her body kind of falling off into darkness. Let's see. Okay. So I'm going to turn on this brush. I'm going to kind of reset it. It's still set to everything I'd set from the last dodging or burning um, brush. So let me go back. Let me just pick on highlights. So I'm going to kind of up my highlights and paint over here. And I am going to, I've got auto mask turned on. And for those of you who have watched some of the other tutorials, you know that that helps you stay within lines. So even if I paint over like this with a bit of a wider brush, it's going to not impact here and here. And I don't really, ha I don't have any highlights here anyway, so it's not going to, I don't have to be too particular. If I was dealing with exposure, that's a different story because exposure is going to touch even my darks and my lights, but highlights only impacts my lights. So if I go over here, let's just kind of paint over that, I can be pretty messy, meaning outside lines, and it's not going to impact anything too much. And again, it's just whatever effect you want, however bright you think you need it. Let me go over this way, and I'm just going to impact the highlights over here. Maybe even make her hair pop a little bit more. I don't have a lot of highlights in those hairs to begin with, so that is actually not making much effect right there. So if I want her hair to pop a little bit more, I'm going to kind of click off that brush, and I'm going to create a new one. And this one, let's work on contrast. Contrast is another way to kind of play with uh, lights and darks as well. It basically amplifies the difference between the two. So if I go on a contrast brush and paint over her, let's just see if we can kind of do this extreme. So you notice one way or the other. Let's see if we can pull up the highlights just a bit. Keep that contrast pretty strong. And actually, I'm just going to pull out shadows just a bit as well. Okay, so I think that makes her hair stand out just a bit more. Now let's go back to highlights. Let's see if this has any impact on her legs. I don't think it'll have too much impact here. It might have an impact here. So I'm going to just bring up the highlights again. 
yeah, so that definitely brings out the light on that side, but not so much here, because we're not dealing with any really light data. So let's kind of create one last brush here, just dealing with exposure. And let's just see if we can bring out her leg on this side a bit more. Now again, we've got to be more careful with this one, because this one is dealing with everything. So if I go exposure up, but now, yeah, see I'm bringing that leg out, which is kind of nice. All right, so we're getting there. Now, if anything, the only other thing that I'm noticing on this image that's a bit distracting is I can still see bits of the floor here. See all that area where you can see like little bits of the paint? And let's just see what we can do with that. I'm going to try to do one more dark brush here and bring down the highlights and bring down the shadows. Let's just see if that gets rid of it. Yeah, that does a pretty decent job of getting rid of it. Not perfect. Those things are so bright that they don't really want to hide that good. But it is definitely working a bit. And if I wanted to be super particular on this image about those uh, little spots that are showing, I'd probably go in and use my spot cleaning, uh, spot healing brush. Uh, and with this, I can just kind of click on an area and hide them. Right here, click on there, hide them, make them darker. So there we go. And kind of as a final touch on this image, like even though I've dodged and burned it, um, now I realize there's still spot showing, but it, rather than making this tutorial 20 minutes, I'm just going to ignore that for now. Um, if I wanted this to pop even a bit more, I might turn off my brushes and just do an overall uh, brightening of the whites. This is a global adjustment right here. So there's extreme. I think that looks really fake. I don't want that. Just go up a bit. Um, I'd probably use the clarity slider a bit to bring out just, it brings out edges. So you notice that really made her hair kind of stand alive there, which I like. Um, and... Yeah, in terms of the light on her and the dark, the shadows and lights, I really like that. A few other little cleanup things I would do, but that would be essentially it for now. Um, and just to quickly hop over to a color image as well, just to see how we might impact that. So right here, uh, Portrait of Devon. Now, I actually kind of like this the way it is, but there are some things that I'd probably change using dodging and burning. Uh, one, I find his skin just ever so slightly too bright and I might want to kind of play with my contrast in terms of making some of this area dark, some of it light, just to make uh, interesting parts of this stand out. For example, the snow here, the frost on his um, parka, I might want to make that stand out a bit against here, so let's just quickly do that. I'm going to kind of burn down his face a bit, so I'm going to go here, I'm going to go to Let's just try highlights first to see if that does the trick. I'm going to bring down my highlights a bit, and I'm going to paint over his face. Let's just kind of, I'm not going to touch his eyes, but I'm just around his skin. And you see that that is effective, and just darkening it enough. Let me go extreme just to kind of show you the differences. Very bright, very dark. That's where it was. I'm just bringing that down just a bit so it doesn't look quite as overexposed to me. And I'm going to create a new brush now, and let's work on bringing out the highlights, bringing down the darks, and let's just work with contrast here. Bring up contrast, bring up highlights, just right here. So see where that's making my darks a bit darker, and my lights will get a bit lighter. So just paint around that a bit, and that's totally crank. I always like just ramping it right up to the extreme so you can see in real time the difference. Um, and then you just kind of find what you think feels about right. So right there, let's just see, so this is touching the highlights, but that just gives it a little bit more pop. Again, if I do a before and after, pressing my backslash key, let me just get off the brush, before, after, I mean it's very subtle, but if your photo is decently exposed at a camera, it should be subtle changes you're aiming for. I um, mean, the name of the game with any sort of editing is I love to keep things as quick and easy and efficient as I can. I don't like spending tons of time in Lightroom as much as I love the tool. And it's usually just little tiny subtle changes to make your image pop a bit more. Uh, thanks for listening today, and I hope you enjoyed this uh, quick tutorial on dodging and burning in Lightroom 5.